Welcome back, everybody. So, last time on Bayonetta 3, we met the alternate uh, French versions of Bayonetta and Dear Mother Rosa, who we sadly had to gun down for contrived reasons. But we got a cool weapon out of it, so I figure before we tackle the 11th Remnant, I'd show that weapon off really quick. Okay, so, with Tartarus, this is a slower weapon that is more defensive. We can block a lot of attacks, although we can no longer move. But we can just kind of go to town on enemies, which is pretty fun. Uh, so you can't really move once you start charging, though, so you're, you're not the most mobile. Uh, I went ahead and bought every weapon, or up upgrade too. Worth noting, the guns are kind of worthless until you fully upgrade them, because they don't really do a lot of damage. Which, me, I will get a, uh, a big enemy, maybe with a health bar that will show you. So let's take a look at this big boy. So I'm gonna just unload. And we start chewing through that health pretty good. But if you don't, you, you kind of don't really get that much out of it, I find. But yeah, this is an interesting weapon type because it just lets you kind of just... just tank a lot of attacks that you wouldn't be able to otherwise. And we can just combo things down. Also, these guns destroy, like, the environment stuff really easily if you don't want to keep using your demons to do so. We can kind of... we split apart for our, like, little spin attack there. So that's, like, our big jump uppercut. We, we basically still have an afterburner kick for the aerial. Let's get away from that. Um... That's like our big kind of gap closer. That's the big uh, attack while you're uh, guarding. You can basically do a teleport move with it, with a uh, kick. I think we can like suck enemies in with this, but I think he's too big. So let's actually get the... Uh, well, here, we'll, we'll kill him. Why not? We'll get the, the small enemy back in here. I don't know if that's actually going to do anything or not, but we'll see. Yes, not. It, it might draw. I think it draws them. It draws them to you, but I don't think it actually does anything to them. And then we can charge up this particular move and do a huge spike ball attack, which is kind of fun. Yeah, the, the, the guns don't really have a lot of stopping power, but they are continuous. And then I guess... That, and that's, I could go over, like, a bunch of individual combos if I really wanted to, but... This is pretty much what you what you really need. But, um... But yeah, the, uh, the big thing, I guess, then, going into, like, the Demon Masquerade... By, by yourself, you're just kind of pulled by invisible strings. Or, well... By strings, but you can't see the puppeteer, I guess. Just scrape along the ground. You look you look like a pretty banged up steampunk puppet. And then your triple your double jump as it is is just you moving like this. You get a lot of air time, you don't actually fall. So this can kind of invalidate what little platforming this game really has. I find. And um Lastly then I guess I'll get a big enemy out for this. I'll show off the Demon Mask, or the, the, the Demon Rage, I think, the big super. Which might look a little sim similar. So yeah, that's basically what Rosa did to us at one point. A lot of damage. Uh, I guess we'll start showcasing uh, our little tower friend. Uh, 
a very weird demon, as I mentioned before. Stationary from where you summon it. Um, various things you can do. Punching brings out these fists that you have to like manually control, which is kind of weird. Um, kicking brings out like these pistons um, that will start doing projectiles on the ground, which is interesting. They shoot out like gigantic shells. And um, I wish... Oh, wow, the frame rate is not liking that. The uh, I wish you could like set your settings. You had like infinite magic. But um, if you press uh, jump... You get free witch time from that bell, and people have found that it's, like, really kind of broken. Um, if you, like, time it perfectly, you basically just get, like, infinite witch time, which is uh, pretty pretty crazy. Um, and then... We can suck enemies in with this move, if it'll actually get close enough. Okay, you're gonna do that instead and just ignore it. That's fine. But, uh, you can suck at me with that, you can do a bunch of different things. I'm gonna... Set... See, the thing is, though, with this and with Gaon, um, they do drain magic pretty quickly because they, they're slow and they just kind of stay active for so long. So you gotta kind of pick and choose when to use it. But what's cool is that you press R, and you get the mech suit, which has its own uh, move set as long as you hold the uh, demon uh, demon slave button down. And depending on the the uh, moves you're using, they will be different in the the demon. Or they'll be different in the mech form than if you're just using the tower by itself, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, the the. The, having the armor again is cool. It doesn't feel nearly as OP as in Bayo 2, which is probably for the best. Um, and what's interesting is that, yeah, you, you don't actually get hurt while you're in it. You just lose magic because it's part of the demon. Uh, some cool aspects with it, actually. So, a, a pretty cool demon, all things considered. It's a, it's a, it's a very nice thing to add to our... Uh, a very nice thing to add to our collection here. Uh, with that said, though, we do have another remnant to take care of, so I'll see you when we do that. And we're back with Viola, for some reason. That, a reason that will be made clear here in the future. I actually kind of like this challenge. It does stand out from a lot of the other ones. We have these fragments to collect over this big, wide little expanse here. But uh, we have to ride a bunch of floating platforms to actually reach most of them. And we got some flying enemies to worry about too in the distance, which can be a little, a little taxing to deal with. But we'll do our best here. Uh, collect this first one, and then I think this one's going to actually start shooting at us because we're technically close enough, which is... Kind of scared, wild, considering you can't even, like, see it. But, you know. Uh, so this this next one, we're going to have to be really careful with uh, timing some wall jumps. But we can get the second one. And I'm going to kill this guy. Because he's annoying me. I'm going to go back over here and hopefully... So, sadly, the camera is not really helping, like, at all. I don't know quite why. You just, it just won't actually, like, it wouldn't let me go up, for or let me look down. We got this one, and then we're gonna hit this guy. There we go. Uh, I don't know if I can actually float and get this. I think we can. Her hover is pretty good, actually. And what, what we're going to want to do is, as tempting as it is to fight this guy right away, I'm going to get this first. 
which we actually have to go into this little little cage. And now I'll track you down. Okay. Thank you, Cheshire. And we can actually just go on here, because this is actually solid ground. Take this guy out. I believe that's all of them. And, bada bing bada boom, the final one. We finished it with Viola, which is a, a uh, bewitchment, excuse me. I think that's a full witch heart for that. Time could have been slightly better, but I will gladly take that. Not bad. Oh, she didn't say she didn't say not bad. Well, it was, it was not bad. Viola, you, you need to you need to celebrate your victories where you can. So it's just a full full heart for that, I guess. Um, okay, weird. So I did retry this a few times. I was trying to get it a little closer, and I actually did pop the bewitchment, but I exited out, which is kind of weird. So I I guess you get a bewitchment pop even if you exit out of the level. That's good to know. But yeah, if you defeat every single one of those enemies, that's also a Bewitchment. Finishing with 130 seconds left, I think you can easily do if you avoid the enemies. But of course, that means that ruins your score, so you would probably have to play that one bare minimum twice. But that was kind of cool. A neat, simple one, and we, we use Viola for once, so... You know, I don't mind using her if it's a, you know, not combat-intensive mission. But that will do it for the 11th Phenomenal Renman. Next time, we'll get the plot back on track with Chapter 12, The Edge of Madness. That, that sounds totally great. Not foreboding at all. See you next time.